The Legend of Zelda. A wonderful franchise, my favorite in fact, as is the case with many people, perhaps even yourself. The series is so revered that I honestly struggle to find the right words to describe it. What really can I say that hasn't already been said? Blorgenspiel. Well, I don't think that had quite the effect I was looking for. Anyways, what I'm getting at here is that The Legend of Zelda holds an exceedingly special place in my heart. And, just like many of you, that place was first carved by my experiences with the franchise on the Nintendo 64. You see, I was eight years old when Majora's Mask came out in the year 2000, and I absolutely had to have it. I had already beaten Ocarina of Time by way of month-long late fees from Blockbuster, and I was ready to embark on a new adventure. So when my mom came home with a rectangular package, I was thrilled. Fast forward 12 seconds, the package is open, and it's Ocarina of Time. I didn't actually get Majora's Mask when it first released. I had to wait a year. But I was no less excited to play it at age 9 than I was at age 8. And now that I'm 30, the excitement remains the same. So with that said, let's play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. And if you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is LP, and I do, you guessed it, LP's predominantly Nintendo, always blind, very seldomly 100%. And to that effect, we're not going to completely 100% this game, but we are going to get every mask. And I'm so excited to do that because I haven't done that since I was like 10. <laughs> In the land of Hyrule, there echoes a legend, a legend held dearly by the royal family that tells of a boy. A boy who, after battling evil and saving Hyrule, crept away from the land that had made him a legend. Done with the battles he once waged across time, he embarked on a journey, a secret and personal journey. A journey in search of a beloved and invaluable friend. A friend with whom he parted ways when he finally fulfilled his heroic destiny and took his place among legends. Oh, and in case you didn't already know, I am playing this on the Nintendo Switch. I do have an N64 and a Majora's Mask cartridge, but it's honestly just a lot easier to capture the uh, the video and audio from the Switch itself as opposed to uh, what I have to do to capture my N64 stuff. Not that it's impossible or inherently difficult. I've done LPs and stuff on the channel with the N64, but you get it. You get it. And that's the end of the story. Link has fractured his vertebrae, left alone in the forest to die without his horse or his fairies. Well, his fairy, I guess. He's searching for Navi, right? These are these fairies here, Tattle and Tail, they are not anywhere interested in the well-being of our, of our Hylian hero. <laughs> you two fairies did great. I wonder if he has anything good on him. Huh? This guy? Well, that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm pick his pocket. He's got you know, another $20 here. Pack of cigarettes. Ooh. He's dead. He finds the ocarina. Ooh, ooh, what a pretty ocarina. Hey, Skull Kid, let me touch it. <laughs> I want to see. You can't, Tail. What would we do if you dropped it and broke it? No way! You can't touch it! Oh, but sis, why, why can't I try it out too? <laughs> Skull Kid finds the single note oddly hilarious. He's a simple boy. Very simple. <laughs> oh, but very athletic nonetheless. With a vertical leap of at least 84 inches, he hops over Link onto the horse and rides away into the sunset. Link holding on behind Epona will not listen. Probably coming pretty close to injuring the poor boy. I hadn't really considered this when I played this as a child, but holding onto a running horse is not necessarily the, uh, <laughs> the, the safest choice to make in that instance. Honestly, man, you're going to get your freaking leg broken. Thankfully, for better or worse, 
Link is tossed aside here, where our adventure begins. Our control over the hero commences with nothing but a sword. And now we re-familiarize ourselves with the controls. So as I mentioned, playing this on the Switch, we don't exact we don't have a B and well I guess there are there is a B and an A button, but we don't have C buttons. We have to use the right analog stick. Or I believe X and Y are also two of those. So yeah. Can we get any monies? Yes. You get paid for cutting the grass here. It's very good. Link has a great part-time job. Anyways, I suppose we should move on because I don't I don't know that we actually keep anything that we accumulate here. I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've played this game. Uh, but I do know that we, we lose rupees a lot if we don't store them in the bank, and obviously we don't have access to the bank yet, so... I don't know. Whatever. We'll see. We'll see. We'll play it by ear, right? The whole point of these LPs, at least for me on my channel, is to play them blind. Of course, I mentioned that this LP is going to involve us getting every single mask, and I don't believe in myself enough to think that I can do that all straight from memory. So at some point later on in the series, I will have to consult some sort of guide, or the, your comments will actually be supremely helpful in that, in helping connect me with the missing masks. What's with that stupid horse of yours? It doesn't listen to a word that's said to it. Doesn't doesn't speak English. There's no point in writing a thing like that, so I did you a favor and got rid of it. <laughs> oh, boo-hoo, why the sad face? I just thought I'd have a little fun with you. Ooh, come on now. Do you really think you can beat me as I am now? A fool! Ooh, look at me shake my face. It gives you a headache. Immediately sent into a nightmare. Link's got to begin questioning his sanity at this point in time because as the camera pans in closer to his face, he is surrounded by Deku scrubs. Can't imagine they smell very good. Or, or maybe, I don't know, what, 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 what would they smell like? Like fresh foliage on a fall day? Or, 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 or maybe like sewage? <laughs> Probably closer to sewage if I'm being completely honest. They're not friendly and traditionally unfriendly things have unfriendly scents. Oh my god, my t-shirts will no longer fit! Link is distraught, his wardrobe entirely useless. <laughs> now that's a good look for you. You'll stay here looking that way forever. Ah, oh, oh, it's hilarious. Your suffering is my pleasure. Adding insult to injury, the fairy continues to pile onto Link's forehead. Not knowing that the door is going to close right behind her, separating her. Zazus! from her brother. Oh my god. Whoa, Skull Kid, wait for me. I'm still here. Tail, you can't leave without me. Easy there, girl. You're gonna give yourself a TBI. A CTE here. You! If I wasn't dealing with you, I wouldn't have gotten separated from my brother. Well, don't just stand there, Deku boy. Do something. Why are you looking at me like that? What? There's something stuck on my face? Will you stop staring and just open that door for me? Please, come on, a helpless little girl is asking you, so hurry up. Oh, Tail, I wonder if that child will be all right on his own. You know what? I forgot how much you sucked. You're gonna blame me? Blame my forehead for attracting your fists. And, and, and then that's, and that's, that's the reasoning behind you getting stuck behind this door? It, it's my forehead's fault for attracting? No. It's absurd. You can stay in there. Oh, she came. Well, forget it. We move along. I vaguely remember what we're going to do here. Hey, wait for me. Don't leave me behind. So, um, that stuff back there. I, uh, I apologize. So, so take me with you. You want to know about that school kid who just ran off, right? Well, I just so happen to have an idea of where he might be going. Take me with you and I'll help you out. Deal? Please? <laughs> oh, good. So then it's settled. Now then, I'll, I'll be your partner, or at least until we catch that skull kid. My name's Tattle, so uh, it's nice to meet you or whatever. Now that we've got all that straightened out, can we stop messing around and get moving? If I figure something out, press up on the C button and I'll tell it to you. 
Alternatively, just press up on the right analog stick. Hopefully you'll manage to get by without my help until then. Link, breaking the fourth wall, shakes his face at the camera. All right, looks like we have our first puzzle. What's the solution? I think it's to float. Burrow ourselves into the flower. Shoot ourselves across the gap. Very nice. Very nice, Link. It, it's, it's very convenient that you've got two giant freaking flowers holed up inside of your body somewhere. All right, this is not a straight shot. We need to go over there where that creature is, where that disfigured Deku is. It's an alliteration. Don't you love it? We're learning English. Uh, we're going to go this way. Oh, there's also a chest. There is also a chest. Well, don't mind me. I mean, just how... Just how the fairies' fists were attracted to my face. My face is attracted to chests. Excellent! You got a Deku Nut. Press B while flying to drop a Deku Bomb. Upon impact, it makes a blinding flash, freezing enemies in their tracks. Very good. We have now become to arm with explosives. Now, can we make this? I don't think we can. Yeah, let's hold up. Hold up. All right, we're going to fall into the abyss, or are we going to make it? <laughs> oh, let's take a little bit more caution here. We need to get to that one up there, and I probably could have gone around this spire on my last little venture there. But we'll do it this way. Oh, no. No, we won't do it this way. We'll plummet. Get back. Barely. Dropping bombs. Okay. So maybe, maybe I remember even less than I thought. It's fine. We haven't actually suffered any damage or deaths or casualties of any sort, so it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We're having fun, and that's what counts. Mm, is this is this close enough? I question that. I don't know. We'll try and make it as straight of a shot as we can. A B line, as they say, which is more of an I line. Hey, you, come on. Press Z and talk to me. ZL, my girl, ZL. There you go. See? You can do it if you try. When I fly over to people or objects, press ZL to look at them so that you can talk to them. Use Z targeting to talk to people, even if they're far away. Or, if there's no one to target, you can use Z to straight look ahead. But enough about that for now. Come over to this tree and check it out. Emphasis on tree. Check. Very clearly not a tree. Looks more like a Deku, and we're familiar with that. I mean, look at our face. Look at our face. It's strange, but the way you look right now sort of looks like this tree. It looks all dark and gloomy, almost like it could start crying any second now. How sad. Truly! Truly, and that's another thing about Majora's Mask that I always kind of admired. It's uh, exceptionally dark, right? Like, especially as far as Nintendo games go, which are ordinarily very family-friendly, very cheery, very upbeat. Uh, and that's not to say that Majora's Mask is depressing or anything, gosh darn it. No, it's a great game and it's plenty of fun. There's tons to be gained in the way of emotional satisfaction. But there, I mean, and if you haven't played it, you'll see soon enough as we play through this that there are some deeply ingrained underlying tones of sadness, death, despair, and general negativity. You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Oh, she don't like him. <laughs> I own the Happy Mask Shop. I travel far and wide in search of masks. During my travels, a very important mask was stolen from me by an imp in the woods. So here I am at a loss, and now I've found you. <laughs> now don't think me rude, but I have been following you. For I know the way to return you to your former self. If you can get back the precious item that was stolen from you, I will return you to normal. In exchange, all I ask is that you also get back my precious mask that the imp stole from me. What? Is it not a simple task? Why, to someone like you, it should be by no means a difficult task. Except, the one thing is, I'm a very busy fellow, and I must leave this place in three days. The frickin' moon's gonna kill us all. How grateful I would be if you could bring it back to me before my time here is up. <laughs> but yes, you'll be fine. 
I see you're very young and have tremendous speed courage. I'm sure you'll find it right away. Well then, I'm counting on you. All right, creepy dude, very much terrifying. <laughs> but dawn of the first day, 72 hours remain. I have a inkling, an inkling, a small idea of what it is specifically we're supposed to do. And I think the first thing we need to do is get in good with the children, the bombers, I believe. And I think they are in North Clocktown. He gives me the creeps. That mass salesman was the, uh, sorry, just thinking aloud. But three days? Even if we never sleep, that still leaves us with a measly 72 hours. Talk about demanding. Well, don't just stand there. We're going to see the Great Fairy. Look, you're gonna find the Skull Kid, don't you? The Great Fairy will know what he's up to. She watches over everything. And just between you and me, the Skull Kid is no match for the Great Fairy. Go to the shrine near the North Gate. You'll find the Great Fairy in there. And how are you? How are you an expert on, on friggin' Termina, on, on Clock Town here already? I thought that you were from Hyrule as well, wandering about in the Lost Woods. Little did I know, she's an established traveler. She's been to Clock Town, she's been to Hyrule, she's been the friggin' pop star. Hanging out with Kirby. And here's my favorite guy, Tingle. I'm looking at my Tingle plush on my desk right now. Friggin' glorious. All right, so the Great Fairy's over here, and yes, I was half correct in my assumption that we needed to befriend the bombers first, but in order to do that, we actually need the Great Fairy, because she gives us the magic so that we can blow friggin' spit bubbles. Whoa, no, the Great Fairy! What's going on here? What's up, Fair... Rees? Fairy, we're targeting... Skull Kid, please find the one stray fairy lost in town and bring her to this fairy fountain. We will rub our bodies on you to motivate you to be fast. Okie dokie, ladies. Let me just stop targeting your mass real quick. Okay, I... Mm, do I remember where the fairy is? I, mm, mm, mm. I, I think... I think the fairy is in East... Clock Town, perhaps like just south of the mayor's house or town home or establishment. Uh, it's really nostalgic to see all this again. Like it's been a long freaking time, like at least ten years since I've played this game, and seeing all of the like new areas of the map getting introduced like that with the panning effect is really giving me chills. Is it inside here? Somewhere over here. I, I think it might be in this one. No! No, I was wrong. Is it up here? I mean, there's a free, there's a flower. We're meant to burrow inside of it. You got anything else other to do? You see a friggin' flower and you're a Deku scrub, you're gonna dig in. Hmm. Nope! I, I remember now. I remember. The, the fairy is over this way at the, like, laundromat place. The fairy doesn't like to get their, their dry cleaning done at the place across the street. They prefer to do it by hand here in the river. Yes, that's right. Great fairies. Little did you know, very, very particular about the washing of their garments. I mean, they barely have any garments traditionally, but in particular nonetheless. Okay, well, we missed that time. Can we arrange a meeting here? Thank you. Little did you know, lady, that's exactly why I'm here. I'm something of a hero myself. Don't mind my woody appearance. And here's another flower. What is this? This is for me. Wait, wait, hang on. Oh, oh my God, we can stack some potatoes here. You want, you're looking for some carbohydrates? Or we'll bring you a snack and some. Uh, um, mm, oh. This is my private property. Don't try using it when I'm not around. Well, excuse me, princess. I'm so sorry. That's right. We need to bring... That's like part of a trading sequence or something, I think. We have to We have to give him something, and he gives us the, the title deed to that 2x4, two 2x2 by two by two location, the square tile on the map that features that flower. We get the rights to it after we give him... I think it's a, a gem of some sort. I'm not certain. We'll, we'll get to there. 
We will. I think it's integral to the advancement of the plot, so. But first and foremost, the unification of the fairies produces one giant, scantily clad woman. Hello. You've got such massive eyebrows. Tattle, and you, young one of the altered shape, thank you for returning my broken and shattered body to normal. I am the great fairy of magic. I thought that masked child was helping me and I grew careless. All I can offer you now is this. I shall grant you magic power as a sign of my gratitude. Please accept it. <laughs> Let me fill you. Yes. Make it rain. Link is feeling the effects of the magic. It's going straight to his head. Blacking out momentarily before arising. Rejuvenated. You've been granted magic power. In your current form, press B to shoot bubble blast. Press and hold B to blow a big bubble. Release B to shoot it. Your magic power decreases when you shoot. Replenish it with magic jars and potions. The man who lives in the observatory outside of town may know the school kid's whereabouts. But be careful. You must not underestimate that child's powers, kind young one. If ever you are returned to your former shape, come see me. I shall give you more help. I need your help out here. Oh, yeah, you hear it in the recording? The freaking sirens are blaring. And also, hey, I thought that... I thought my fairy told me that, that the Skull Kid was no match for the Great Fairy. But the first freaking thing he did is kill her! <laughs> Alright, what's up, dude? I'm gonna impress you here with my balloon-popping skills. What the heck was in that balloon? Gunpowder? It was an explosion. Are you the one who just popped that up there? Not bad for a Deku scrub. <laughs> we bombers have a hideout that leads to the observatory inside town. You need a code to get in? Maybe I'll tell you what it is. But don't think you're getting it that easily. I can't just tell you what the code is. You have to pass my test first. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, line up, guys. If you can find all five of us by tomorrow morning, I'll teach you the code. Are you ready? Oh no. Oh no, that one's not as athletic. <laughs> Alrighty, now we begin the wild goose hunt, or the wild child hunt. There's one. Oh, oh, I, mm, I can hear your little disgusting feet, alright? I know a child when I hear one, alright? Every child, at least up until age seven, is noisy and sticky. Oh, buddy. Oh, man. You know what? Let's just call it. Let's just call it here. You don't even don't even worry about it, man. You, yeah, I got you. <laughs> oh, you caught me! Now there are only four left. Indeed, there are. Uh, and we'll just move clockwise through Clock Town, <laughs> as God intended, right? And I believe there are two here. Not counting that guy. That's just the guard. But there's one up here. Man handling a cuckoo. Don't do that to that chicken. You're gonna go get stuck in the... You're gonna do the same thing your, your friend did? Oh god, you're a spastic little boy. My goodness gracious, the fastest kid alive. He's got like a 4240. Oh, you got me. Now there are only three left. Yes, there are, and I believe one of them's inside of a box. Oh, or is he up there? Or both? I'm just gonna break the boxes, just to be certain. You never know, right? Gosh darn it, what sort of creatures could be hiding in the boxes, especially in a Zelda game? You break the pots, you break the rocks, you cut the grass, you just destroy everything that you possibly can, and maybe you'll get paid. Oh man, these poor children are really just not the brightest. They need someone to come take care of them. Someone like me. Two left! Two left. Uh, I don't believe there are any more in this part of the map, and I don't think there are actually any in central or southern clock town. Of course, that's where we're going next. So we'll find that out rather quickly with a quick scan. Doesn't quite look like it. Is there one in the wash bay? Hanging out perhaps where the great fairies, uh, I don't know, what do we want to call that? Part? What is the part of the great fairy? I don't want to target that. I'm just kind of look around here. 
No, there is not one over here. Interesting. We're losing daylight. It's already 4 p.m. We've got... We were told until tomorrow morning. Where do they cut that off? Is it, is it first light or is it midnight? Which is technically morning. I think this is a good question. Something, something we should have clarified from the get-go, in fact. As, of course, our first time here, there is the second-to-last little bobber boy. But this will still beg the question as to where is the final one? Doing pretty well uh, for myself <laughs> in finding the first four so easily. But I'm already concerned. Perfect. You caught me. You caught me. I know. I got the I got the moves. Not like Jagger, per se, but like Link. Special kind of move set. Move set that you only find in Hyrule, but I'm in Termina now, baby. So you guys better watch out. Uh there's mm. Is this is this one right here? You just chilling out here, dude? What the heck? <laughs> no way, you finally got me. Works out, though. We did a nice little loop. You're pretty good for a Deku scrub. If only you were human, then I could give you an original bomber's notebook and make you a member. What do you guys think? No way, we're racist. I guess not. Once we let some kid who wasn't human join our gang, and boy, did we ever regret it. Sorry. Yes, because anyone who's not human is all exactly the same. Ridiculous. I had to speak to your parents. But I'll teach you the code, just like I promised. I can tell you only once, though, so play close attention. Are you ready? Okay. So, 5, 4, 2, 3, 1. The code is 5, 4, 2, 3, 1. The entrance to our hideout is in East Clock Town. 5, 4, 2, 3, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You know, I don't, I, I don't think that's Jenny's phone number, but it is the, the phone number to the bomber's hideout, and that's ultimately what counts. So what's up there, orange banana? Banana? Bandana? I know how to speak. If you want to pass through here, you have to say the secret code. What's the code? Five, four. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, oh. It ends in one. Uh, <laughs> uh, was it two, three, one? Yeah, because it wasn't three, two, one. Uh, that's right. If you know the code, then you're a member, right? Okay, here you go. Um, I'm, go I'm just gonna sit right here. There's a lot of cool stuff at that telescope guy's place. Oh yeah, uh, the bomber's secret society of justice forever. The secrets are a society of justice forever, except you're racist. Mmm, -hmm, doesn't sound quite like justice to me. Justice requires a certain level of equality and a certain lack of, uh, judgment. <laughs> but maybe that's just me. Maybe I've got my own definition. I don't know. I don't proclaim to be a professor of justology or anything. I studied communications in school, all right? I wanted to be on the radio. I didn't even do that. Okay, we've got another balloon here. Thankfully, we are chock full of spit bubble magic. Pop that baby up. Also explosive. What are these people doing filling their balloons with with friggin' gunpowder? Exceedingly dangerous. Someone's gonna lose a finger, a hand, their entire forearm. Scarecrow. What's up, baby? Yo, hey, baby. I'm a stylish scarecrow wandering in search of pleasant music. <laughs> Time will pass in the blink of an eye if you just dance with me. If you like, baby, we can forget the time and dance till dawn. Shall we dance? No, gosh, darn, no. Get, no, no, time is precious, all right? I got like three days to get back to this creepy mass salesman, so I'm not trying to waste any of it doing cardio with you. Uh, do I want to learn the song? I don't have a musical instrument, though. Oh, yeah, now listen up. If you play that strange song backwards, you can slow the flow of time. If you play each note twice in a row, you can move a half day forward through time. How's that? Pretty interesting, isn't it? But I'm sure I'd like any song written by you better. If you like, you can play one for me. I don't got any music, dude. I'm sorry. I'll get my bagpipes or my pipes or whatever in, in short order, but not just yet. Okay. So we're meant to talk to this dude, right? The old man? The observatorist? Well, well, a strange-looking child has joined me today. Are you a new friend of the Bombers Gang? Hmm, your manners seem much better than those of your mischievous friend from the other day. <laughs> that ill-mannered troublemaker from the other day said he'd break my instruments. He said he'd steal my moon tear. There was no stopping him. 
Even now, just watch him, he's probably causing trouble around the clock tower. Will you gaze into the telescope? No. Sure. The strange old man asks you to look at his telescope, kindly run away and call the police. But in this instance, it's fine. There's our man, zoom in. Twitchiest face as ever, gazes up to the sky where, oh goodness me. That moon needs some eye drops. It's dropping eye drops down on us, nearly hitting the building itself. How convenient. And the Skull Kid being as pervasive and vulgar as either. Goodness gracious, this has been an experience. Well, did you find that troublemaker? And that loud noise, what, what, what was that? Perhaps another moon's tear has fallen nearby. Go through that door and take a look outside. But I wonder how that troublemaker got on top of the clock tower. The only way up there is through the clock door. And that opens only on the eve of the carnival. Indeed it does, but you know the Skull Kid's kind of an omnipotent evil being with the, you know, Majora's Mask, so yeah, it's probably not wise to question him. Ah, oh, we've got the Moon's Tear, and I remember now how we get that deed. We gotta go give that Deku the Moon Tear. Its sparkling beauty radiates rather strangely. We gotta go back there and give the Deku boy the Moon's Tear. I, I think his wife wants it or something, like... Because he's working late and she's pissed at him and he needs to bring her home something. Or maybe I'm just imagining that. Maybe he just wants to be a nice a nice husband. And I get it. You know, it's it's whether you're in a romantic relationship or you're just friends or whatever, it's it's pretty cool to give each Oh my god! <laughs> not not cool to get assaulted by arachnids. It's cool to give each other gifts. Yeah, it's it's nice. I honestly don't do that as often as I should for my fiance, but that's just because we're in the midst of saving for our wedding. Yeah, we're, we're getting married here uh, on the 29th. So it's coming up quick. <laughs> money. Money is short. We can't just be cracking open pots and cutting down grass like Link here, finding $5 bills just strewn about. As nice as that would be. And so I think as well, once we do deliver this Moon's Tear, and we can probably actually put that on our inventory there. Okay, so... So X, X is down C. Interesting, because X is like the topmost button on the Nintendo Switch controller. So X, but okay, all right, that's gonna take some getting used to. I, maybe I'll just stick with the analog stick, I don't know. Uh, but what I was going to say is that once we get this, this deed here, I think we have all we need uh, to go confront Skull Kid. Obviously not to, to win, but to move forward. I'm thinking of closing up shop so I can buy a gift for my wife and return to her in my village. I've heard that a stone called the Moon's Tear shines brighter than any other in the land. If you've got one, I'd really like to get it from you. My wife would love it. If you give it to me, I'll give you my spot here, Deku Flower included. Cool. Well, here you go, buddy. Let me just rub this against your feet. Oh, that stone! You must hand it over to me and stay. I know. In exchange, I'll give you my spot here. Deku flower included, yes? Deal! You traded the moon's tear for a land title deed. You really helped me out. Now I have the perfect souvenir for my wife. She hasn't set eyes on a jewel or strange sparkling stone like this in a very long time. The title deed for this spot should be in high demand among Deku scrubs, but you already know that. If you don't need it anymore, you can always sell it. You know, you'd like to think so, but unfortunately, I don't think you actually can. <laughs> I don't think there's any vendors in Clocktown willing to purchase it. As strange as that may be, right? You'd think that, that land in a metropolitan area such as this would be in high demand, but instead, no. I mean, maybe this pup wants it. Nope, the pup just wants our flesh. Well, see you later, bud. We're going to hop in here and go grab that piece of heart. Because why the heck not? We've got like two days to kill still before freaking Skull Kid or the festival, before it's time to go do the thing. You got the piece of heart. Collect four pieces of heart to assemble a new heart container. Each new container you put together will increase the amount of life energy you can have. Very good. The door to the clock tower opens only once a year, at midnight, on the eve of the carnival. 
Thank you very much. Okay, so now this begs the question, what are we going to do until then? Because we could just go back to the Scarecrow and boogie our booty off until the break of dawn a couple times over, you know, kind of move, move through time. You get what I'm saying? We could do that. Or, and this is probably what I'm going to do, we could friggin' speak to people. There's tons of inhabitants in Clocktown worth talking to, and I haven't spoken to any of them in, like I said, 10 years. And we'll probably start here in South Clocktown, but we're gonna do that next time. So thank you so very much for watching. I truly do appreciate it. If you had a good time, and I hope you did, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing to see the rest of the series. Either which way, thank you again for watching. And I'll see you then.